welcome back to my youtube channel if this is your very first time stopping by you are welcome my name is Raisa and I do videos here on YouTube as you can see so in today's video we are going to be doing my first Q&A session because I put up a post on Instagram asking you guys if you have any questions so I could answer them on my YouTube channel and I got a few questions probably like six questions or something but I get more questions in my YouTube email so I'm going to like combine that and answer most of the questions that I am being asked okay and I do not plan I don't have anything I'm going to be doing on the site to show you guys but we'll just answer these questions as fast as possible because there were no many okay so let's jump right into this video just so you guys know since I use my phone to film I just have my laptop here I'm going to be looking at the questions because I send them to my laptop I'm going to be popping them up on the screen as well so you can see the questions that were asked on my Instagram let's go with this one the first question is what's your most embarrassing moment so my most embarrassing moment my most embarrassing moment can I even think of one there have been so there have been quite a few okay there's this one where okay you know how when when you're trying to always talk in class and then the teacher asks you something you feel like oh yeah you know this and then you you realize that what you said was actually very wrong but it was just rubbish that he said and the teacher just tells you oh no that's not it and everybody's like oh after you're trying to show that you know too much <laughs> oh boy yeah that's embarrassing moments i've had so yeah next question you ever give me conditional approval whereas i showed my ordinary level english so basically most most of the time when they give you um conditional acceptance there's definitely um, an underlying factor to that and um, it is either because you don't have english um or you're, you're still waiting on your ielts results or you have not produced a one of the documents that you're supposed to produce or so you're supposed to send to them you have not done it and maybe just one kind of one document that they just ask you to bring so just something that they, they require from you so it may not it may not be something big a, a, condi a conditional acceptance just means they're giving you this this admission based on the condition that you provide so so and so so documents so don't always panic once you want to see conditional acceptance just make sure that you find the reason why your admission has been given under a certain condition once you find that reason you prove to them or you give them what they want and then you apply for your visa so just that so don't panic once you get any conditional acceptance at least you still got an admission you still got accepted but then you're being accepted on the on the condition that you're going to provide this that's if you also have the intention of providing it, because if you don't have it then that's different but if you're going to do it then you know it's not a problem the next question is what have you loved the most about your university journey so what i've loved the most about my university journey is there is no stupid question any question you ask there's a reason for you there's a reason why you asked that question if you don't understand something regardless of whoever is there who is standing in front of you or even if it's not in school it's at the workplace an event honestly there is no stupid question you're asking that question because as you while you are there your mind is thinking your things are going through your head like oh, okay what if this scenario happens what if this this goes on always feel free to ask your question because as you just have taught us they create the atmosphere where you are able to um take it upon yourself that as i'm in this space i am free to ask what i want to ask without being judged and that's what i like about the schooling here i know back home there were times where you want to ask a question or you want to ask you're just looking at the whole class the amphi the amphi is like so full or the students are just looking at you like okay what is she asking why are you asking a question now when they say any question nothing like that so you don't really feel but most of the time if you have a question to ask because at the end of the day thinking about the fact that i am paying three times tuition more than you people who are paying normal tuition oh yeah my question is valid i have every right to ask the question because i'm not ready to fail i'm not ready to risk anything i'm going to i'm not going to i'm not ready to risk any form of failure i am going to ask my question do you, do you understand so there is no stupid question feel free to ask even if you're an event the teacher will answer 20 times they, they, if you go and meet the teacher again after and say you know what that thing that you explained i didn't understand it can you go over it again they will do it that's what they're paid for and they'll tell you if you have it if you have a question come ask me it's in the course of asking those questions that the teacher will even know you and honestly sometimes you don't even need to pass with i must say you should not study you but there's a, there's a probability that the fact that you keep pushing you keep going to that teacher to talk to him he knows your face he knows you he knows that 
hmm, this student is really trying, you know. At the end of the day, you'll be like, oh, how did I get a, a, an 80 in this class? How did I get a 70? It's just because your pushful nature to learn, you're willing to learn, you're willing to put in the work. Do you understand? All like people who just go and then, okay, it's supposed to be, there are people who have questions, past questions, they can revise it and they're lucky. Or some people just cram it and, and they end up having the same answers. Because you know that exams are the true, the true test of knowledge. We know, we have learned that. Most of the time, exam is not the true test of knowledge because honestly, if we are going by that, some people who have learned stuff or have passed exams, after that class, ask them, can they remember what they learned? They will, never, they will not be able to tell you, but you who has been asking that question back to back, it's six. It's six compared to other people who have not, who, you know, who did, who did not even get it, they just wanted to pass. So, we're done with that question. The next question, how is life in Regina? Can you do a video about the ups and downs? Thanks. So life in Regina, to be honest, is not bad. Being a first timer here is going to be it's going to take you a lot of time to adjust, especially when you don't know some so many people, when you don't when you haven't gotten um a stand yet, it's going to be a bit rocky, which is normal for the start to be always be rocky, you know. So don't feel bad all the time. Get out there, talk to people. Yeah, it's a bit sometimes intimidating to always go and talk to or make the first move to talk to some people. But a close mouth is a close destiny. It's you who needs that help, especially when you have come. You need the help, so you have to try to approach people, put your best foot forward out there, and seek help if you need it. And that's how you can make get to know people and make friends. And from there, you get to know this person. You they'll take you to their church. They'll take you here and there and stuff like that even if you are about to take the bus if you don't know where you're going to talk to the bus driver some of sometimes they can be having a bad day and will transfer your aggression on you don't take it bad just keep moving do what do the best you can you can do for yourself and at least at the end of the day you know that you have tried even deep within you you'll be happy that you made you tried you know but it's bad when you don't it's, when you don't try at all you're like okay how do i come out of this situation it starts weighing down on you and then you're like ah, i don't know how to get out of here before you know it you're struggling and you're finding regina a bit very very annoying and stuff like that regina is a small place so you should moving about shouldn't even be a problem unlike in bigger cities yes you will get to meet a lot more of people that are more um africans and other places than in regina just because of the population but it doesn't still stop you the fact that regina is small it makes it even easier for you to get to meet those people but then try to also belong in that place you know you said i should do a video about ups and downs well i'll see if i can do a video about that ups and downs i'm going to sit down and put my thoughts together for that okay so so life in regina is generally okay it's it's perfect if you're a person that likes a small small places like regina or small cities should not be a problem because commuting is easy to leave from here and go to from point a to point b i've always said this on my channel but you don't need to take the worst time to go from one point to another and then also another thing about regina is the fact that it's easy for you to, when you're done school like immigrating into saskatchewan in saskatchewan is it's um it's easier especially if you school here and then another day you want to apply for permanent residence by through the provincial nominee program once you have schooled here you should be okay you're, you're like it's easier do you understand what i'm saying a lot of people are going now by express entry which is still fine but in a situation where you are having a high a hard time with all the maybe ielts and stuff like that you can just use professional nominee and then when you finish you just go directly into that program and you'll be fine you'll be okay so immigration too is one thing commuting is meeting getting along with people meeting people also living here accommodation is cheaper compared to other places and as, as well as buying a house for the future it's a good place for family for starting a family if, like it's just something about china that's what i can think of for now okay next question somebody asked this what is the best the best and possible way to continue to combine both without i think the person meant to write both school and work without affecting your school your school grade i'm going to say planning is one and so effective use of your time is important a lot of times you may think that you're going to do this in in 30 minutes but you end up spending more time on it or you're going to go to work and you're going to be back by this time and they may ask you can you stay longer so allowing yourself to be able to be disciplined enough that you put your school first will be what you should worry about so even though you're here you're trying to work at the same time you're trying to do whatever you're doing always remember school is your priority because the moment you lose focus on that school you risk having problems with immigration and you don't want that 
you don't want to be in a situation where immigration is like okay what's going on and blah 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 what's up with you this can affect you eventually when you want to apply for, for your permanent residence and that's definitely not the path you want to take even as you're going to school or once you're done school you don't want to have any issues with that you know have a schedule balancing your time between work and school so if you're going to spend these hours in, at work and you spend this amount of studying depending on how well you are able to consume your knowledge and absorb it then um, that should be able to help you to be able to, to decide what amount of time you're going to give to each of these things or how you balance other activities you have sometimes you see, you see some people who are man, who are um, leaders of this group in school they are working at the same time they are working three jobs but they still manage that time well as long as you can balance it it will not affect your school grade um this person said right son no questions just know that i am proud of you oh thank you thank you thank you so much honey at least somebody is proud of me drum rolls yes. yes okay so that's so sweet um so these are the ones i got on ig the other questions i'm going to answer now are from my gmail so the emails that i get somebody asked me about age they said they are 40 years old are they still going to be able to be accepted or so to be accepted at the university honestly there's no age limit there have been people in my school who were actually older than me in my class and it's not it's not an issue age should not be should not limit you from going to school or from pursuing your degree at the same time they require you to be 18 years in the university or so to start university that's because of the way the system is here they make it such a way that by the time you're 18 you're entering your university or you're 17 turning 18 you're entering university and we've had people who have come here when they were 16 and they started school when they were 16 right um that case is different if you're coming when you're younger you need a guardian so that's the only difference and if you're older that's one that there's no problem with that you know whether you're 40 years 50 years if you want to go to school after why not you can go to school you know that's not a problem okay another question i don't want to like see the, the question is just about it's in relation to if you if let's say for example you studied um education or social work back home and then you want to come here and study nursing how is that possible am i am i going to be accepted am i going to be given a visa or so so what i'm going to say in this case is that if you started with social work back home or education back home and you plan on coming here to do something different for visa purposes you should always try to do something pick a program that's in line with your field of study because when the visa officer always takes your documents or they take your um, stuff, they are looking to see, okay, why do you want to come here? If you were doing um, education back home and you want to come and do nursing, all of a sudden, okay, all your life you have not thought of nursing. It's just now they are coming to Canada to come and do nursing. Why is that so? Why do you want to start a career in nursing instead? Why not the other? Why don't you want to stick with what you are doing? Because there's probably a reason why you decided to do education in the first place, but then what made you change your mind? So in that case, they will be like okay this doesn't tie we are coming here to come and study you've been doing nursing or you've you been doing education all your life now you want to come and do nursing you don't even know you have not taken science sciences before you have been doing mostly art stuff all of a sudden you want to come and study physics and chemistry and see how is this possible now do you understand and uh, so it starts ask, they start asking questions except you have something serious to back that up which is very very hard to always explain because most of the time it boils down to what to money yeah we're looking for money all of us Abby. so in that case it's very very important to know that okay even if you're trying to to come here and change or switch to something else once you get you apply for something in line with your field of study and then once you get here you do your research and then see how you're going to be able to start something different do you understand so they're going to now tell you okay you have to enroll in this, this class maybe in chemistry class the basic chemistry basic math basic physics do you understand so in that way it doesn't look like okay you don't know what you want to do you're not sure of, you're not sure of what you want even do you get what i'm saying i don't know if that makes sense but i hope i'm speaking to somebody i hope i am speaking to someone i hope i am making sense anyways yeah that's another common question i've had to answer another thing i have to tell you guys you people i am not immigration anything i say to you here is based on my own experience i'm not saying that if i tell you that oh they're going to give you a visa if you don't do it. everything is different and with the way things are changing the system is changing i applied for my own stuff since which year 2015 this is 2021 almost in 22 things are changing every time you guys will see these things 
there's a lot of changes happening so always bear that in mind anything i say is based on my opinion if so you do something and it and doesn't work maybe try another thing okay try another one and if it doesn't work again try another one don't just sit there and say oh this person has said this one no, you do your own research always do your own research the website is there try to go there and check sometimes okay but anyways that said yeah another common question can i study and work at the same time this one is i've already answered this question 20 times so you can yes you can study and work but as an international student remember you can only work 20 hours in a week except you are working on campus if it's any job off campus you can only work 20 hours a week okay so once you pass once you get out of 20 hours you're yeah, out of the bracket and you should be able to you have to fix that yeah you talk to your employer and then they, have, they will reduce the amount of the amount of um, hours that they're giving you so you have and you're the one that's to stay stay on track with that because your employer is just there to give you hours come and work for them come and work but it's your name that is there and it's your record that is there so always bear that in mind so i think that's the very last question i'm going to be answering in this session so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys like this video i hope you enjoyed it and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it as well and stay tuned for more videos guys thank you so much don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel okay and i want to thank all those who are new here those who have joined the channel i really appreciate you guys thank you so much for coming and I hope you like what you see and you will definitely so thank you so much and i am out